Dr. Ashton here, and we're still talking about Chapter 7, Piaget and Vygotsky. This is the fourth video um, where we are talking about Piaget's cognitive developmental theory, um, and we're looking at the concrete operations stage. So again, as a recap, concrete operations is roughly from 6 to 7 to 12. Um, again, these are ranges. They're not concrete rules. Um, this is when children can think logically about concrete objects. Um, they can add and subtract. Um, the children also understands conservation. In middle childhood, children show dramatic changes in their thinking entering what Piaget called the concrete operational stage of cognitive development. Knows what? During the concrete operational stage, children begin to use logical instead of intuitive perception-bound reasoning. They are no longer fooled, for example, by Piaget's classic conservation tasks. Do these two look like they're about the same amount? Okay, yeah. good. Smash that. Are they still the same? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do these two have the same amount? Yes. Yes, they still have the same amount. When these children are asked why they believe that the taller glass or the flattened Play-Doh contains the same amount, their explanations illustrate that they are now able to decenter or to think about more than one aspect of a problem at a time they are able to follow the transformation from beginning to end and to mentally reverse the process, achieving a logical milestone that Piaget called reversibility. Just, just because this glass was poured into there, just because this glass was poured into there doesn't mean that, that, isn't, that it isn't the same amount. It might be short a drop or so, but it's still the same amount. Because just because you flatten it doesn't mean it changes. Because it's all you did was just smash it down. It didn't change. This before was this shape, and and just because this is flat now doesn't mean that that it dropped mass or accumulated mass. So we talked about some of these things in the video. Reversibility, the capacity to think through a series of steps and then reverse the direction. They saw the Play-Doh smash down, but they were able to reverse it back and say, no, that Play-Doh, it may look different, but it is the exact same because they were able to reverse that, um, that direction of the steps and return to that starting point. And this allows them to really pass those conservation tasks um, because they get this principle of reversibility. They can also do seriation, which they did not talk about in this video. Um, this is the ability to order items in a quantitative dimension, such as length or weight. Um, so given a series of sticks, putting them in order from smallest to largest, um, they're able to do this. They're also able to, through transitive inference, do mental serration. Um, transitive inference would be showing them um, kind of three sticks and saying, okay, look, A is bigger than B and then take those two sticks away and then show that, okay, B is bigger, C is bigger than B, um, and then take those two away and say, well, what, what's the situation with A and C then? They've never compared A and C directly, but they should be able to do um, this transitive inference that C should be bigger than A because B was bigger than A and B was smaller than C, so C will be bigger than A. They can also have cognitive maps, uh, according to Piaget, and this is mental representations of familiar large-scale spaces, such as their neighborhood or school. We actually see that this comes on a lot earlier than Piaget thought, um, but he thought that it started really in this concrete operation, so roughly um, sometime between 7 and 12. Um, he said that this took really considerable perspective taking um, and to we, they had to be able to refer to infer layout um, by relating these separate parts. Um, we see that in this concrete operational stage, according to Piaget, that a child is able to use all these mental actions. Um, and because of that, they're able to do um, some tasks that Piaget says that are um, kind of thematic 
of concrete operations. One of this is decentration. Um, this is the idea that they're able to consider multiple aspects of our problem um, and not just focus on one aspect of it. Um, so again, this is another thing that's going to help them um, do the past these conservation tasks of Piaget's. Um, we also see that there is this gradual improvement of understanding conservation in terms of number, mass, length, and weight. Um, and your book talks about these in um, figure 7-5. Um, and we'll see that there are kind of differences, that not all of these kind of happen at the exact same time, um, that you may get one versus another at a different time frame. Um, we also see that in concrete operations that they can start to do relational reasoning. Um, and this is starting to understand the use of categories. So if they see uh, a chihuahua, they're going to know that's a dog. Um, they may not have the understanding of um, kind of the greater classes that, okay, well, then a dog is a mammal, so then a dog, this chihuahua I just saw is a mammal, um, which is an animal. They may not have this kind of um, class inclusion, um, understanding these subclasses, um, but um, they, um, they're starting to really understand categories according to Piaget. Again, they're going to be able to pass that seriation task where they're given um, things that are different heights, lengths, or weights, and um, being able to put them in order. Um, and again, they have this ability to kind of work through um, this transitivity issue of the different lengths of stakes. So these are those um, kind of tasks that are mastered um, in concrete operations. Remember, operations is that ability to kind of think about things, according to Piaget. And so he's saying, here they're able to mentally represent these things. They're able to think about them in a concrete way, um, even though they may not have those things present in front of them. That ends our discussion of Piaget's concrete operations.